as, as mentioned, my name is Ben Fulton, and I'm a senior associate with the Pew MacArthur Results First Initiative. I want to thank Quinton for that excellent um, introduction and um, just speak on behalf of everyone else here um, that that presentation was, was really interesting and moving. And um, I am both happy to come after that because I think it ties in really well with the Results First project, but also um, unfortunately have to follow that incredible presentation. So um, nothing like setting a high bar there. So um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for um, allowing me to be here today to talk to you about Results First and, um, and talk more about this incredible conversation around evidence-based policymaking and um, a mission that we all, I think, share um, to try to improve outcomes um, by making better decisions using evidence. So as you can tell by the, uh, the long name um, up there on the Results First Initiative, which is what we call it for short, it is a joint, uh, jointly funded initiative by the Pew Charitable Trust and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. And what we are is a national initiative that partners with select states and counties across the country to help them engage in evidence-based policymaking. Um, we do that by providing tools, training, and technical assistance um, to our partners to help them um, um, identify and invest in programs that are proven to work. And so um, we work in a number of different policy areas, um, adult and juvenile justice, um, child welfare, substance abuse, uh, mental health, um, early education, um, and uh, some general prevention programs as well. Um, but I'm going to focus um, today on criminal justice, which is um, really where most of our state and county partners begin, um, because as we know, in all those kind of policy areas that I just mentioned, um, a lot of the linkages in, in terms of their outcomes come back to the criminal justice system. Um, and so one thing that kind of inspires the work of this, pro um, this project is that there are tons of policymakers out there, uh, many of you who are in the room here today, um, and who are, are similar to Evelyn's um, um, real commitment to trying to bring more evidence and research into the decision-making process, but there's just this breakdown in how they actually get at that information and harness it and use it in a way that's, um, that's powerful to make an impact in their communities. So I'm going to touch um, first on the kind of results-first approach to evidence-based policymaking and our, and our mission to really um, provide a roadmap for policymakers um, like those in Chicago that were interested in um, investing in programs that would work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, we really feel like if, if you're interested in investing um, strategically and targeting programs that work, it's really helpful to get an understanding of where you currently are. And so we help states build a snapshot, a program inventory of the current programs that they're offering in a given policy area, um, as well as information about how much they're spending on them, what's the um, description, um, dosage, and duration of these programs, and ultimately, do they match to evidence-based programs that um, have been rigorously evaluated either in that state or county um, or uh, in other and other parts of the country um, using a results first clearinghouse database that I encourage folks to check out online. It's a really great resource for um, eight nationally recognized clearinghouses with information on over a thousand programs in other policy areas um, that provides a, a kind of ranking structure um, so that you can get a sense for um, whether an intervention may have been studied in another place and whether it's an effective evidence-based strategy. Um, and so that database, that program inventory, is a really powerful resource. Most, um, if not all, states and counties that we've partnered with um, have not had a um, robust program inventory designed in a way that um, policymakers could use it um, both in a kind of internal um, agency capacity to make resource allocation decisions, um, but also to um, support the work of elected officials in both the executive branch and the legislative branch. Um, so the program inventory is a really powerful tool in and of itself. Um, it also sets the stage for benefit cost analysis, which is a um, really important part of the results first approach. And it comes from the understanding that um, these policymakers are really interested in looking at um, some of these social programs in a, almost a private sector way of thinking. Um, where, you're, where you're thinking about what are the potential um, costs and benefits related to this program, what kind of return on investment um, could I see? And so that is something that um, has been really powerful. It's a combination of the best national research that um, is available using meta-analysis and combining it with state-specific um, financial and demographic information to try to project um, what an investment in a program um, might do um, going forward. 
Um, and then finally, um, we, we help um, states and counties use this information and translate it into action um, by providing um, policy assistance um, and taking our um, knowledge that we've learned from other states and counties and, uh, and helping them steal from each other and, and, and um, participate in this community of learning. So I do want to close here by talking about the different states and counties that we're working with. Um, we're in 22 states now and eight counties. Um, as you can see, a wide stretch here of different um, political, geographic, um, and population diversity here. Um, states like t Texas, Mississippi, Florida, um, and California, New York, Massachusetts. So um, we've seen these states take this information and use it to build these tools out um, and use the findings to redirect um, programming resources towards programs that are um, proven to work and likely to have a high return on investment. They've used this to also prioritize funding for future evaluation um, for those programs that maybe our state or our county um, uh, designed and maybe the research hasn't caught up on yet, um, and then do everything from um, passing legislation and using administrative code to try to um, create sustainability around evidence-based policy making and, and make this a capacity building approach um, where these states and counties will be able to do this work in an ongoing way. Um, so with that, um, I will say that you uh, folks should check out the website. Um, we have a great video on there that um, it's only a couple minutes long, but uh, it, it kind of runs through um, the project's goals and, and how it works, um, as well as you can find um, a lot of great case studies from the states that we're working in and, um, and check out um, the various um, different projects. So um, with that, I'll um, turn things over uh, to Maya.